Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video for what is convert mouse location to world space. Let's go ahead and look at the node itself, and we'll find it right here. This node is intended to basically literally do what it says. It converts the mouse location, so where's our mouse on our screen or our viewport, to where it is in the world. And that's it. It takes in a player controller. Remember, it's going to use the screen position based on your camera. So if you have your camera changed in terms of size and things like that, it, it really doesn't matter. But it's going to use the camera attached to this player controller to determine the mouse location. And then it's going to convert it to world space. We're going to get a location, which is a vector. Of where in the world is it this mouse at? And then a direction for where this mouse is basically oriented. Pretty much the rotation of the player controller normalized is what our direction is. And then if it came back true or false, we'll get a Boolean value for the return. For the most part, unless your mouse is off screen or not capturable, you're going to get back a valid value. So let's go ahead and show you this. If I hit E right now, we're going to get back a value. So my top left corner is going to be roughly negative 10, 0, and 5.7. My bottom right is going to be roughly positive 10, negative 5. So you can see it going basically, we have roughly roughly 20 degrees left to right, not 20 degrees, 20 units left to right, and 20 to 10 units up to down. If we get it near the middle, we're going to get something like our 0, 0 value because our middle is going to be, you know, 0, 0. And it's 0, 0 because that's where my player's at. If we were to run this again, eject, grab my player, figure out where I have him hiding. He is located at 0, 0. That's why we're getting back the value of 0, 0 when we try and um, do this in the middle. Now, something to note. Because this is world space, just because it's X and Y for the mouse location doesn't mean it's going to be X and Y in world space. My character, if we eject again and grab our character, has a Z for its vertical axis, not Y. It does have X for its left and the right based on the position I'm facing, but it has Z for the up and down. That's why when I click in the top, we have a Z change. And when I click on the bottom, we have a Z change. We don't have a Y change. Now, of course, if I rotate my character, well, now we're going to have roughly something different. We're going to have our Y changing between positive and negative 10. But our Z still changes, because again, it's all relative. Pull it out, check our character. Now we have our left and right axis is Y, and our up and down axis is Z still. Of course, if I was to look down and do this, now we have what we'd expect, our X and our Y changes, and our Z still stays the same. But that is, again, it's relative to basically which direction we're facing. That's our result we get back. So you might want to think, well, what can we use this for? Well, a standard use for this would be to basically project and determine what is below your mouse. In this case, I'm grabbing the mouse location, determining the location and the direction, doing a little bit of math to give me a start and end point, and using a line trace. So now when I run this, I can simply point at something, hit E, and we get a line trace. Line trace, line trace, and you can see the line trace is going out, and it will line trace out wherever I'm at. I can aim for the ground, as you can see here. And it's basically going to hit, just like a normal line trace, wherever I'm clicking at. It doesn't matter what rotation I am, because we know what our forward direction is, based on our direction output. And we know where we are in the mouse, the, the location where we're starting at, basically, in the world, because it's our location right here. So it's going to start from our camera, go to whatever location we want, and it's going to go in whatever direction we want. So it's useful if you need to use, for example, maybe you have a strategy game or something like that, and you want to know what is under your mouse click. You could easily use this to just cast down and determine what's under it or determine what's a groups under it and things like that. So that is it. That is our convert mouse location to world space. It's going to take in the player controller. I'll put the location basically in world space where this mouse is. It's pretty much relative to where your camera is. Now, the reason I bring that up is in our viewport, our camera is right here. If I was to move this camera back and hit play, 
and then now I do the mouse click, you'll notice my Y is 275. My character's here, but things are slightly different. And you'll notice that, for example, here's my character right here. I mouse trace from here. But if we look, the trace actually started way behind the character because that's where my camera's at. So you got to keep that in mind. Your trace, your, your starting location is relative to the camera and where the camera is in the world, not necessarily where your player is, especially if you have your camera offset like that. And that's it. That's going to wrap up our convert mouse location to world space node.